welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here happy monday it is monday so that means it is meal prep day and i have an amazing meal prep for you we have good healthy whole clean food that is ww friendly and of course is absolutely delicious i have breakfast lunch and a sweet treat P.S. They're sugar cookies for you. So you definitely want to stick around and check out these three recipes. So without further ado, let's jump into this weekly My WW Meal Prep. this week I'm gonna be making blueberry jam chia pudding I can't wait for this I love jam with any type of yogurt it just gives that extra goodness and sweetness so it's going to be amazing with chia pudding this is a very very simple recipe you can do a lot of modifications and changes to fit this into your likes and dislikes but I'm gonna do a blueberry jam you could do strawberry jam raspberry jam just follow the main recipe and change out the jam and the toppings so let me show you what's in our recipe you're going to need some almond milk or milk alternative of your choice. You can also use regular milk if you would like. Of course, we need chia seeds for chia pudding. You can use frozen or fresh blueberries or whatever berry you would like to use. I'm going to be using this organic wild blueberry fruit spread from the Thrive Market. This stuff is incredible. Down in the description box is a link to join the Thrive Market. When you sign up for one year, you actually get to pick $20 worth of free product of your choice. You guys know how I feel about the Thrive. I order from them one to two times a month. They're 30% cheaper than the grocery store and they give back to the community with every membership and every order, which is absolutely incredible. So if you're not part of Thrive, definitely check that out down below. So this wild blueberry spread came from Thrive. My maple syrup also came from the Thrive Market. This is the Thrive Organic Maple Syrup. And then you're going to need some vanilla extract. So let's start making some chia pudding. So to get started on our chia pudding, each recipe makes two jars of chia pudding. So I pulled out two jars. I'm going to double this recipe. I'm going to make four jars total for the week, but the ingredients I'm going to show you is a two serving amount. So first we have a whole cup of almond milk. So I want half of a cup per jar so reserve the other half of a cup of almond milk for the other jar we're also going to add one tablespoon of maple syrup per jar so i'm going to go ahead and add in all of my liquids first just because it makes it a little bit easier once we mix in those chia seeds and then we want about a teaspoon of vanilla extract so i'm just going to kind of eyeball that i'm going to give this a swirl because i kind of want to get that honey mixed in with the vanilla and the almond milk so it doesn't just settle to the bottom before adding in my chia seeds so for two chia puddings is a third of a cup so basically i'm going to put in about half of this third cup of chia seeds per jar again give that a swirl we want to make sure those chia seeds kind of get mixed in with the liquid you can give it a stir as well so that all those chia seeds don't just settle to the bottom of the jar and then lastly we're going to add our jam but we're going to measure that on our food scale it makes it a little bit easier so for the jam portion we're going to use our food scale rather than trying to get two tablespoons of jam out of this jar with a tablespoon and then scooping it into here we're just going to measure it out on our food scale so one tablespoon or one serving of this jam is 18 grams we are going to do two tablespoons per jar so we want a total of 36 grams so this is the food scale I have. I just bought this. This is the Red Rock. It's so cute. I got this off of Amazon. I'll leave it down below for you guys. So let's go ahead and put in the 36 grams of jam. So that's 26. There we go. So that's 37 close enough so there is our two tablespoons of jam we're going to go ahead and add two tablespoons to our other jar and then we'll stir this up and get this in the refrigerator Thank you. 
So once you've given it a nice big stir, this looks so good, you guys. I am gonna go ahead and pop my lid on, and I always like to shake it really good before I throw it into the refrigerator. You can see all the chia seeds down there on the bottom. We wanna make sure that those chia seeds get mixed in with the liquid. So I always give it a big stir, make sure your lid's on nice and tight. So see chia seeds, that's another thing we wanna make sure that they get more incorporated in the jar. So I'll do that and then I'll be back to show you kind of what I'm thinking for toppings for mine and we'll go over smart points and calories. So we're gonna go ahead and add in some frozen blueberries. So. I'm gonna do about a quarter of a cup per jar. I'm not going to measure these out. I'm just going to eyeball about a quarter of a cup of these frozen blueberries. Now again, you can use whatever berry you want. You could use raspberries, strawberries. I just chose to go with blueberries because I had this big bag of Costco frozen blueberries. So there is the pudding once we add the blueberries to it. So let's get these in and then I'll be back to give you points and we'll go over points and calories and talk all about the different toppings that you can add to this blueberry jam chia pudding. All right, so here is kind of what my thoughts are as far as toppings go. Now I may change my toppings up throughout the week and just add whatever points I need to add to make it according to my taste buds that day. But of course we're gonna start our day with the base of our chia pudding. So the chia pudding itself is six smart points on all plans. Man, WW, you need to not count chia seeds as so many points. They're so good for you. They have so many nutritional benefits, but they are high in smart points on WW. So the pudding itself is six smart points. Now, if you wanted to keep it at six points, you could just top your chia pudding with a few more of these frozen blueberries. And then that way, your whole breakfast is six smart points. You can also add some eggs for some extra protein. That may be what I do. But if you want to add some other fun toppings and just take the points for them, a good option would be unsweetened coconut flakes. You can have a tablespoon of these for two points or half of a tablespoon for one point. These I also purchased off of Thrive. Another fun topping for a little bit of that chocolate vibe would be these cacao nibs. This would be a great thing to add if you wanted that crunch and that little bit of chocolate. You could add one or two smart points of that. And then another really good option is nut butter. So this is the Trader Joe's organic peanut butter. You can have one teaspoon for one point. That's going to give you a little bit of healthy fat, a little bit of extra protein. So I most likely will definitely add one point's worth of peanut butter and then whatever else kind of suits my fancy for the other day. So that is breakfast for the week, my friends. Chia pudding, a very healthy, nourishing breakfast. Again, pair this with some eggs, some extra fruit, and again, six smart points per serving and 245 calories for the chia pudding without toppings. For lunches this week, I'm making a creamy ham pea and potato casserole. I'm so excited for this, you guys. It sounds so incredibly delicious. I'm probably going to pair mine with some extra veggies. You could add a little bit of extra protein, like some zero point chicken or some fish or seafood. It would be really good with any extra protein on the side. It does have ham in it, so you are going to get some protein. I can't wait for this. I've been craving scalloped potatoes, and this is the next best thing. It's clean, it's WW friendly. Yum. So let me show you what's in our recipe. You're going to need some reduced fat or low fat milk flour, peas, you can use canned or frozen, whatever your preference is, salt and pepper, some potatoes, you can use any potato. You could use russet, yellow, Yukon, red. I have these in my fridge from Trader Joe's, so I'm gonna use those. You'll need some paprika to top the casserole, yum, and then some butter. So I'm gonna be using the Melt plant-based butter. I am going to give you guys points if you use light butter in place of regular butter, and I'll tell you, you do save one point, you guys, that's it. And you're getting a lot cleaner food and regular butter. So whatever your preference is, I'm gonna share both point values with you. And then you'll need some diced or cubed ham. I'm gonna use this leftover diced ham that I picked up for a little recipe a couple weeks ago where I made those ham and cheese muffins. Those were so good. Don't forget you guys, all my recipes are on my website. I'll put my website here on the screen for you and it's linked down below. So let's make some lunch. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is cut our potatoes. Now you can peel these. I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't mind a little bit of peel, especially on a red potato. Now, if you're using a russet, I would probably peel them, but a yellow or a red, I don't think the little bit of peel is going to matter. We're gonna cut these really, really thin, kind of like you would a scalloped potato, and put them here in this bowl while we assemble the rest of the casserole. The potatoes kind of go in towards the end, so let's start chopping. So once we cut our potatoes, we're gonna start making the sauce for the casserole. So in my bowl here, I went ahead and measured out 56 grams or four tablespoons of the melt butter. We're gonna add that to a pan and we're gonna let this start to melt. Once your butter is melted, we're gonna go ahead and add in half of a cup of flour and you're gonna use a whisk and you're gonna whisk that flour into that butter until it creates kind of a thicker paste. And then we'll add in our milk. Once you have a paste-like consistency, we're slowly going to add in our two and a half cups of low-fat milk. I'm going to add a little bit and whisk and repeat until all of the milk is added. And we're gonna keep cooking this, simmering this, whisking this until these clumps are gone. Once your sa sauce starts to thick, we're gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of salt. We want about a half of a teaspoon of salt and half of a teaspoon of pepper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add those, give it another quick whisk, and then we're ready to start assembling our casserole. And by the way, I am preheating my oven to 350. All right, we're ready to assemble. Here's that sauce, look at this. It's so creamy and thick. I can't wait for this, you guys. I'm seriously so excited. So I have about a, I'd say six by nine or a four quart casserole dish. I'm gonna spray it with some nonstick cooking spray because of course we do not want our potatoes and all of this yumminess sticking to our dish. And then we're gonna create a layered scallop potato vibe. So we're gonna put about one third of our sliced up potatoes in the bottom of our baking dish. Once you've added a third of the potatoes, we're gonna go ahead and add some of our ham. We want about half of the ham in this layer. So again, you can use cubed, diced, you can even use ham slices. If that's what you have in your fridge, you could just add those slices to the dish. It's very, very versatile. So use whatever you have on hand or what you can get a hold of at the store. And then we're gonna go ahead and add some of our peas as well. We want about half the can of peas, and I did drain these first so make sure that you're draining your peas before you're adding them or we might have a watery mess all right so there's the first layer of the potatoes peas and ham now we're gonna put about a third of this white sauce on top so I'm just going to drizzle some of this over the top and then I'm going to use my same little whisk and I'm just gonna divide it amongst the potatoes, peas, and ham. Just make sure it's kind of evenly dispersed. And then that way we've got that little bit of creaminess in each layer. Now we're going to repeat that same thing. We're gonna put another third of the sliced potatoes. So we're, again, creating that layered dish similar to scalloped potatoes. You know how scalloped potatoes, the potatoes are all kind of layered amongst each other and the, these beautiful layers and cheesiness. Oh my gosh. I literally have been thinking about scalloped potatoes for weeks. And when I came across this recipe and did the modifications, I was like, wow, this could be a really good WW clean eating recipe for a lunch prep. So that is how this recipe came to fruition. All right, my oven is ready, so we're moving right along. We're gonna add the rest of our diced up ham to the layer. We are creating three layers, but we're using all of our ham and all of our peas within two layers. We don't want any of that going on the very top layer, so go ahead and put the other half of your ham and then the other half of your peas. Now, I use 10 ounces of ham, by the way, and I did measure that out on my food scale. That's what I had accounted for when I figured the points of this recipe. And then we're going to, once again, top it with another about third of the cream mixture here and divide that evenly over the top. And the last layer is just potatoes. So we're gonna go ahead and put those on. Now this is the layer that I'm gonna try to make a little bit prettier because this is gonna be the top layer of this casserole. And then once we put our potatoes on, we're going to add the last third of the cream sauce. And then this is ready to go into the oven. And again, I preheated to 350 degrees. We are going to cover our casserole with some aluminum foil. 
foil. And then this is going to go in the oven for about an hour. We will remove the foil the last few minutes of the cooking to get it nice and browned on top. So there is the potatoes. And last but not least, the last third of the cream sauce. Look at you guys how amazing this looks. It is packed full. I can't wait. So I have some smoked paprika. You could use regular paprika. We're just going to top our casserole with that. That's going to add a nice smoky paprika flavor, but also give us that pretty redness on top of our casserole. And then we are going to just take some foil here and put it over the top of our casserole. And again, we will remove the foil when there's about seven minutes or so left of cooking. Look at how incredible this looks. This looks so delicious. So this is our lunch. Can you even believe that? I am stoked for this. So I'm gonna let this rest for just a few minutes. It actually makes 12 servings. It's going to be a quite a large serving, honestly, because it is super, super thick. I mean, it is as deep as this casserole dish is. So we're gonna let this rest for a few minutes. I'll cut this into 12 servings. I'll be back to show you what I'm having for lunch and give you the smart points. All right, guys, meal prep is ready. Doesn't this look absolutely incredible? So here is one twelfth of the potato ham pea casserole. I tried it. It is incredible. It's so creamy and delicious. It's so good. So I have one twelfth of that. And then I went ahead and did a little mixed veggie here. I have some of these Kroger crinkle cut carrots. These have been in my freezer for quite a while. So I have those. And then I also have some of the organic multicolor cauliflower blend from Walmart. So that just gives me that little extra dose of veggies. Of course, that is zero smart points. And one twelfth of this delicious casserole is seven smart points on the blue plan eight points on the green plan only because you do have to also count for the peas on the green plan and three points on purple because zero points for potatoes so how amazing is that one twelfth of the recipe is 205 calories if you decide to divide this into eight servings i don't know what the points would be but it only is 307 calories and that's going to give you a little bit more lunch a little more for your calorie budget. So 307 is not bad, plus whatever calories are in the veggies, but of course those are zero points on WW. And then we have quite a bit of extra here. My husband will definitely love that. So this is lunch. For a sweet treat this week, we're making clean eating sugar cookies. I'm so excited for these. My husband is so excited for these. You guys always ask who eats the sweet treat. He eats it if it doesn't have chocolate. If it has chocolate, he won't eat it. Generally, I bring some of the leftover treats to my real estate office, so it doesn't go to waste. It's just I don't eat them all myself, of course, during the week, but I know my husband will have no problem digging into these sugar cookies. So let me show you what's in our recipe. It's very, very simple. You're going to need some flour, maple syrup, again, I'm using the one from Thrive, baking powder and baking soda, butter of your choice, I'm using this melt plant-based butter, salt, vanilla extract, and then I'm adding a little bit of almond extract as well, just because I really like that in a sugar cookie. So this recipe can be vegan depending on the type of butter that you use because there's no eggs. So that's super exciting as well. So let's make cookies. So the first thing that we're gonna do is mix our dry ingredients. So in my measuring cup here, I have three cups of that organic all-purpose flour. To that, we're going to add a pinch of salt, and that just really helps bring out the sweetness, so don't skip that step. And then we need to add our baking powder and baking soda. So we want one quarter of a teaspoon, um, is this not the cutest thing you've ever seen, uh, of baking powder. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we actually want half of a teaspoon of baking soda, so I'm gonna do two of the quarter teaspoons, and that also helps not dirty another measuring utensil. So there are our dry ingredients, and we're just going to stir this until combined. 
Once you have that mixed together, you just want to make sure all those dry ingredients get combined really, really well. We're going to go ahead and add in one half of a cup of maple syrup. Now, this is the only sweetener we are adding to this recipe, which is the best option or one of the best options for a good, healthy, clean sweetener. And then I have my measured out one half of a cup of the melt butter. I did this on my plant, my plant, my food scale. And if I remember right, it was like 112 grams or something like that for half of a cup. And I did melt that in my microwave for literally five seconds just to get it softened. We're going to go ahead and add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of almond extract now this is really really strong so you don't want to go too crazy with the almond but it does add a nice flavor to your cookie so then we're going to take our spoon and we're going to combine this keep stirring just until everything is combined we definitely don't want to over mix so i went ahead and pulled out my baking sheet here lined it with some parchment paper we want 16 cookies total so the recipe says they should be about two tablespoons in size you guys that's a good sized cookie normally when we do a ww recipe they're about a tablespoon in size do keep in mind too that this dough is very very crumbly so when you are forming the cookies make sure that you're using your hands to make a, the dough a little warm so that it combines really nicely go ahead and place it on your baking sheet give it a push down so that it forms that actual cookie shape and repeat until we have 16 sugar cookies. So we have 12 beautiful sugar cookies and look at this you guys. We have all this uh, cookie dough left so this may make more than 16 if so great it'll lower the points and calories a little bit what's let's see what we end up with once we get these into the oven so these are going in at 350 for about 10 minutes so there is the first batch of our sugar cookies i went ahead and just sprinkled the tiniest bit of cinnamon on top don't these look great? Look how big these are. So I'm gonna get these off of the pan just over here onto a cooling board. Let's see how many more cookies we can get out of the rest of that dough. So I ended up getting five more cookies for a total of 17. It's not going to change the point value, just the calories by the tiniest bit. But still, this is a great size cookie for the point. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these into the oven and I'll be back to show you all of the completed cookies and give you the smart points. All right, there are our cookies. Don't these look so good, you guys? They're nice and fluffy and these are good sized cookies. I think that little sprinkle of cinnamon on the top was really, really smart because they are so delicious. So we ended up with 17 cookies. So our smart points stayed the exact same. So each one of these cookies, and let me pull one off to show you guys. That's how big they are. Good sized cookies. Each one of these is five smart points and that's using the regular butter. They're about 125 calories per cookie, which is fantastic. Again, the size of these cookies for 125 calories. If you opt for light butter, you save yourself a point and they will be four smart points per cookie. So highly, highly recommend. I did try them. They are incredible. The almond extract is literally game changer in these cookies. So, so, so good. So give this recipe a try. Husband and kid friendly as well. Thank you so much for joining me on another weekly meal prep. I hope you enjoyed checking out these three recipes for breakfast, lunch, and those delicious sugar cookies for a sweet treat. All three recipes are on my website along with all of the recipes that I've shared here on my channel. And that website is down in the description box below. Also down in the description box, you'll find the link to join my Facebook group. We'd love to have you come over and join us. We're actually starting a big 90 day summer challenge on the 1st of July. So there's plenty of time to come over and join us and take part in that challenge as well. That is down in the description box as well. And the links to all my favorite things, discount codes on some of the products that I shared with you today, and just really anything that I can save you some money on. So make sure you're checking it out. If you're new, welcome. I'd love for you to join my YouTube friends and family. All you have to do is hit that little subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified whenever new videos are uploaded. I do upload most days of the week, so you don't want to miss out. Give this one a big thumbs up if you love meal prep, and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Have a great day. Bye. Hi.